Okay, so Foundations of Math 30, uh, section 3.1, we went over these uh, definitions, talked about uh, uh, um, set notation, and a little bit of explanation. So that's another lesson, but uh, I'll do question number one uh, with you here. Many of you have done this, and this might be easy, but uh, let's go through it together. So, oh, love this name, Imelda. Imelda drew the Venn diagram to the left, okay? And that Venn diagram looks something like, let's go back. All right, so here's the Venn diagram that she drew, assuming that's a she. Uh, Imelda described the sets as follows. C is produce, okay? So C would be the what kind of set? What do you call this set? The what? C is the what? Universal set. Okay, yes, it's got everything that we're considering for this question. Everything is inside here. The universal set. Okay, C is produce. F is fruit. S is the fruit you can eat without peeling. All right, typically. V, vegetables. All right, so we've got these separated uh, into different categories and subcategories. Describe another way that Imelda could define the sets in her diagram. Okay. Um, look up the answers that you have for number one. Those, of you, I think you all should be done number one. So look up the answers for number one. So another way we could have separated these was by color. Okay. Now, would you keep the same groupings, or would you have to rearrange them? Okay. You'd have to you'd have to rearrange them. Okay. Now the question says describe another way that she could. Um, describe these sets that she's already made in her diagram, the sets that are already made. So does anyone, sorry? The back rearranges them all? Okay. Did anyone, did anyone call these sets something different? Because that's what the question seems to say, so I'm just wondering if anyone says that. Okay, okay, that's a good, yes, that's good. F could be um, food that she likes. B could be food she doesn't like. Okay? All right. What about anything Anything else? Anything else that's kind of common here that's named a little bit differently? Or you can make something up. What about What about V versus, you know, this F or this S? Are all these grown in trees? Let's see. Uh, most of them. Pineapples grow in trees? They're on the ground, aren't they? So that's close. What about uh, what about garden? Grown in a garden? Almost. Well, that was everything except for one, I guess. Um, what about grown in a garden? Peas, carrots, potatoes, beans, corn. Right? Could you grow those in a kind of a North American garden? I guess. And these maybe, you know, maybe not in uh, not in Canada. Maybe you could grow these in Canada. Maybe. Not. So anyway, so I want you to think about think about it that way. Okay. C. Why does it make sense that S, okay, what, is this, what does this mean? S with this little sign, F. What does that mean again? Zach, you remember what that means? No? Did you write that down in your notes? Not this one? Okay. Why don't you look on the same page in the book there? Let's see if it's there. In the summary. Okay, it mentions it, but it doesn't what look doesn't write down the symbol. So where's that symbol? Go back. Okay. Did you get one C, Zach? Okay. Well, that's the one I'm on. So what is it? Uh, what did you put there for one C? Okay. So you wrote down that this one, like S is still fruit. Okay, so who can tell me what this symbol means from Friday? What does that mean? Subset, yes. This symbol means S is a subset of F. Okay, and that means that S is completely inside of F. Alright, subset. Okay, D, list the disjoint sets if there are any. Okay, what are disjoint sets? What does disjoint mean? Nothing in common. Okay, so in a Venn diagram, that would look like two circles that wouldn't have any overlap, right? So 
what are two sets that are disjoint here? Uh, sorry? S and V, yes, that's right. These these don't have anything in common right here. There's no, no overlap at all. Is there another answer there? Yeah, V and F, right. So just circles that don't touch each other, don't overlap at all. Okay, those are called disjoint sets. All right, E says, is F prime equal to V? Is F prime equal to V? Now, now remember, F prime is kind of the complement, right? So what does this mean? That means what? Complement. Emily, what does that mean? Do you remember? What does the complement mean? Well, let's go back to your notes there, everyone. Complement, right here, right? Sorry? Well, the complement, if we're talking about a complement, it's close. If we're talking about a comp the complement of F, that's everything that's not F. Okay? Everything that's not F. So if we've got F here, this circle right here, the complement of F is everything that is outside of that circle but still within the universal set, right? So it's peas, carrots, potatoes, beans, corn. Okay? Now, it says, is F prime equal to V? So, is is this true? Is this the exact same stuff as this? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay? If there was something out here, like, what's not listed? Um, squash. Okay, let's say that something, another vegetable or fruit was out here, then this would not be true, right? But because everything that's not F is inside this B part, that is true, okay? All right, um, F says determine N of V. Okay, so if we go back to this, let's go back to the question here. So determine N of V. Right here, which means what? What does that n? What does that little n mean? Jessica, what does that mean? Remember? Yeah, the number of items in V, right? And the number of items in F, and the number of items in C. So, what is n of V? Well, one, two, three, four, five. N of V is five. What's n of F? Jing, what's n of F? It is, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. And what is N of C? Ten, yeah, it's five plus five, that's everything inside of C is ten, okay? It's pretty easy stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, I want to challenge you guys, when you, when we do a lesson, I'm going to ask you sometimes, I'm, I might not ask you as, as many questions as this every day, because we'll be moving on to the next lesson most of the time. But I, I, I do want you guys to be able to, to remember some of the things that we actually learned in the lesson before. Okay? That's the goal. And if you don't know, make sure you go back to your notes and look. Go back to your textbook and look. And if we go through a question, certainly look at your answers, right? Help yourselves out here. So I just kind of want to get you into a little, little pattern here, okay? And finally, list the elements in S prime. So S prime, or the complement of S, okay, so the complement of S would be everything that's not inside this circle, and when it says list, you actually have to write the, the names of the items. If it says the number of, you just have to count them, right? So if we're listing S prime, you should have it written kind of like this, remember, equal sign and then the braces, all right, so those are called braces, and you would list all of them that are not in S. So all of these right here, and these right here. Oranges, pineapples, bananas, etc., etc. Peas, carrots, potatoes, beans, and corn. And brace. Okay? Any questions about number one? No? Alright. Alright, I know some of you weren't here, and I know uh, half the class is still not here. Um, but they, uh, you know, they'll they'll be responsible for this uh, material as well. So, um, those of you that are 
done this, uh, this assignment right here, 1, 2, 4, and 13, because I'm going to give you a little bit more class time here. Um, if you are done, I do want you to do another question, and I'll let you pick. Okay, so uh, pick one. Uh, let's see, from... Let's say anything from 9 to 20. 20 is kind of a more challenging one. So if this was really easy for you, you might want to pick uh, 20. Uh, and of course, 13 was already done, so don't pick 13 again, but do another one. Anything from 9 to 20, okay? So I'm going to give you a little bit more time. I want those that uh, haven't quite got this homework uh, done to, to finish. And those of you that are done, okay, I want you to, to get a little bit more practice here before we move on to the next, next part.